from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. I down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. And we are together again on the radio. Playing the hits. That's right. I'm playing the hits. No, I'm not playing any music. I'm playing the hits. This is a, a radio show where you walk into the studio and it's like it, you look at the, the list of the top ten, and you say, I'm playing those. I mean, why try to reinvent the wheel? For God's sake, I could sit here all day and try to come up with inventive, creative topics that uh, nobody ever thought of and nobody's ever done before. I could do that. Or I could look at this story and say, why am I wasting my time? Here it is from the Associated Press. Dateline New York, a federal jury has decided that Madison Square Garden and its chairman must pay $11.6 million in damages to former New York Knicks executive Anuka Brown Sanders, ask for her by name, over her harassment suit. A verdict earlier today, found that Knicks coach Isaiah Thomas, remember Isaiah Thomas played for the Pistons? He's been a pretty lousy coach wherever he's been, and uh, he now uh, runs the uh, New York Knickerbockers, and he is the coach as well. A verdict found that Isaiah Thomas had sexually harassed Brown hyphen missing Sanders, subjecting her to unwanted advances and a barrage of verbal insults, but also said he does not have to pay punitive damages. But the jury did find... I turned off the mic for that. You can fill in the blank. (laughs) What did I say? You'll never know. (laughs) I bleeped myself. Pretty funny, huh? <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Because <laughs> you know that's probably the reason. <laughs> it's not like he couldn't afford it. <laughs> don't don't start accusing me of anything. You don't know what I said. You can just imagine what it might have been. Ah yes. The jury did find the Madison Square Garden. Committed harassment against the woman. How does a building commit harassment? Madison Square Garden is an arena, right? I'm imagining an arena sitting there at 33rd Street and 8th Avenue going, Come here, you bitch. <laughs> it's, it's an inanimate object. Yep. Nonetheless, the jury found the Madison Square Garden committed harassment against the woman and decided that she is entitled to punitive damages from MSJ as they call it in New York, MSG, those in the know. The jury found that the Garden owes $6 million for allowing a hostile work environment to exist. They just raised the price of courtside seats. No big deal. Cost doing business. And um, $2.6 million for retaliation. MSG chairman James Dolan owes $3 million. Yes, Brown hyphen missing Sanders came out of the courtroom beaming, it says. here. Here's what she said. What I did here, I did for every working woman in America. And that includes everyone who gets up and goes to work in the morning. 
It's also for the women who don't have the means and couldn't possibly have done what I was able to do. The garden said it would appeal. That's right. An inanimate object is hiring better attorneys next time. After an ugly three-week trial, the verdict gave Thomas a partial victory in the $10 million lawsuit. He said, I'm innocent, I'm very innocent, and I did not do the things she has accused me in this courtroom of doing. I'm extremely disappointed that the jury did not see the facts in this case. I will appeal this, and I remain confident in the man that I am and what I stand, in the man that I am and what I stand for and the family that I have. Hmm. U.S. District Judge Gerald E. L Gerard E. Lynch called it an eminently reasonable verdict and gave the jurors instructions on how to proceed. Before the jury resumed deliberations, attorneys from both sides appealed to the jurors. Brown hyphen missing Sanders lawyer Ann Vladek had urged the jury to affix damages that sent a message, quote, to avoid this happening to somebody else. She said the defendants had ruined her client's career and that she called and she called Dolan a liar. Thomas's lawyer, Ronald Green, told jurors that they had sent a very clear, very strong and very forceful message. He said punishment for the sake of punishment is not what this is all about. The harassment verdict was widely expected after the jury sent a note to the judge yesterday indicating that it believed Thomas, the garden and Dolan sexually harassed Brown, no hyphen Sanders, a married mother of three. After the verdict, Brown, hyphen free Sanders, hugged family members and friends gathered in the back of the courtroom. In a statement, MSG said, that's right, this is the arena speaking now, we believe that the judge's decision was incorrect. We look forward to presenting our arguments to an appeals court and believe they will agree that no sexual harassment took place and MSG acted properly. There is the story. I wasn't there. I don't know what Isaiah Thomas did or didn't do. Though if you really want to get a good laugh, Google this story and read what Ste no less than Stefan Marbury's testimony was like. I, I don't have time to recount it here, but trust me when I tell you. All you need to do is <laughs> Google you know, this, this MSG trial. Isaiah Thomas, Stefan Marbury, and see what his testimony was. It was um, it was when I was in New York, so that would put it at about uh, two, three weeks ago. Oh, it's a laugh riot. They get into some of Stefan Marbury's um, organizational habits. Some of the things he's done while he's working for the New York Knickerbockers. All right, so I, I wasn't there. I don't know what uh, Isaiah Thomas did or didn't do. I don't know what Anuka Brown Sanders must have felt like or uh, whether she was making this up. I really don't know. I don't know. Don't know. But here's what I do know. If you're working in an environment where, let's just say you're working with athletes, no matter what color they are. Uh, let's just say you're working around people whose uh, background is in the locker room. Towel snapping and all of that. Uh, perhaps you want to find some quiet, subtle way not to put a woman in a job like that where the president of the team is a former player. Maybe you don't want to do that. I mean, the real issue here is, was that a good idea? Now, of course, yes, there are laws against discrimination, but we all know about laws against discrimination. We all know how that works. There are ways to get around those laws. When someone comes in who's qualified for the job, you look at their resume, you give them an interview, you tell them that they are very, very qualified, and you are thrilled that they considered coming to your company. You tell them that you're going to be talking to other qualified applicants. You thank them very professionally for coming in. And then you hire somebody with a penis. Because this is not likely to happen if you hire a guy for the job. I, for one, now I, I don't do any hiring, so thank God that I'm not put in this position. 
But I, for one, don't want to work around women. I don't want to. I don't want women in my workplace. Why? Because of the kind of show I do. My God, a woman could claim sexual harassment just by being forced to listen to the show. Even if I never touched her, looked at her, uh, said anything to her, she could say, well, the door was open and I was listening and the show was disgusting and it made me feel like it was a hostile work environment. And then pretty soon you're heading down lawsuit lane. I don't want to go there. By working with guys, the guys understand what we're doing here. And that's that. It's that simple. I'm thrilled that there are no women working where we work. Thank goodness. But I think they could have saved themselves a lot of trouble if they didn't hire a chick for the job. Don't you? For God's sake. Tom, Tom like it. <laughs> One eight hundred. <laughs> five eight hundred. Uh, How many bong loads have you done today? I'm just curious. <laughs> Good catch. Uh, three or four. Where's my head? <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah. The Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Well, the first of the perfect exam of a case between a former employee of Madison Square Garden named Anuka Brown Sanders. And Madison Square Garden. And um, the punitive damages, $11.6 million. By the way, they have not gotten to the compensatory damages yet. Uh, it's going to be a lot more than $11.6 million. And uh, I say, uh, you, you know, in, a, in an environment like that where it's sports and there's an athlete who's the president of the team and all that, maybe you best not put a chick in there. Find some way to not do that. Makes sense, right? Debbie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, good afternoon, Tom. Hi. I just want to let you know that I, I listen to your show all the time in the afternoon. I'm driving home in traffic, and, and it's very entertaining. I don't agree with everything, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. And I just want to totally agree with you because you know what? And I told your screener, if you can't run with the big dogs, you need to stay on the porch. And when you're in an environment that's mostly men, you just got to suck it up and be tough because of the whole whiny crap. No, but, the, but you don't. That's that's the point. You don't have to uh, because you can always sue and get millions and millions of dollars. This is what I talk about all the time. I know, and it's retarded because I, I, we live in such a, you know... Litigious, I guess, is the word society. It's, it's well, we, we live in a litigious society because we allow women these rights. Well, I, I mean, I agree with you. I don't, I don't think, she, I don't think she should be working there. My, my husband's a fireman, and there's women on the fire department. I probably know one that is, is capable of pulling a man out of a building. Otherwise, you know what? I don't think women should be firemen either because. It's not a job. It's not a place for, for women. Well, I and certainly I, think if a woman is going to be a fireman. Uh, that she should be prepared to live with the existing facilities. They shouldn't be building separate bathrooms and separate dressing rooms and all that stuff. That They just shouldn't be doing it. I completely agree. I absolutely agree. And you know what? Frankly, I'll speak for myself, but you know what? We're all bitches. <laughs> so, you know, if that's the worst thing that's, that was said, come on. And, you know, who knows what really went, went, went on. Uh, excuse me, what went on. But... I, I agree, and I agree that and there's just certain areas that that maybe women should uh, delve into, and you know I think it's ridiculous, and I think it's ridiculous how many people sue over everything. So I I just I agree. But with they you. wouldn't and, sue if we didn't give them the right to do it, and that that's where the problem lies. Well, you know what, men, women alone. I mean, I work um, in insurance, and uh, you know the amount of things I see about people suing. So, you know, for every little, you know, I have a little fender bender and uh, I can't. He called me a bitch. I had to come to work and hear that, that I'm a bitch. <laughs> well, personally, I. I, I mean, Bull freaking home. I love working around men, but I wouldn't want to work in an environment. I mean, I just wouldn't put myself in situations where. where you know I, what, lady? Go work in a preschool, uh, go work in a library somewhere. Uh, go become a flight attendant. It'll be you and all your homosexual friends, but come on. 
You're, you're, I, you're working as the marketing executive for a basketball team where the president is a former athlete. I totally agree with you, 100%. And I think that she is totally ridiculous, and it's just... And you're right. It's a, she's doing it because we're we've allowed people to be able to sue and get all this money. And it's just, it's outlandish. It's terrible. It's totally outlandish. Totally. Anyway, love your show, and thanks for taking my call. I hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you, Debbie. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Ray on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, um, well... I, I work in a corporate environment similar to this, um, not an athlete, you know, situation. But um, I got to tell you, I live in fear all the time because of settlements like this. Um, I have 13 people that work under me. Four of them are female, and uh, you know, you never know when you're going to say the wrong thing. You know, you if you comment that you know this woman has a nice jacket, and you say, "Hey, nice jacket," she may take that wrong, and you know. Start a lawsuit. That's entirely possible. Or the next day, you could not comment on her jacket and her... Well, I, I look, I tell you, boys, don't talk to women in the office unless it's directly related to work. Don't compliment them on their shoes, their dress, their hair. Don't talk about their nails. Don't talk about their pocketbooks. Just don't talk to them. Yeah, absolutely. And Just you know, don't. I got to tell you, I've, I've shied away from disciplining women that should have received discipline for fear of the fact that they could retaliate against me. I think the solution is not to hire women any time you can get away with it. Absolutely. I inherited these this team, so there's not much I could do about it. Right. So, um, you know, absolutely. When you're, when you're a boss of uh, a team like that where you have females on your team, you really have to walk on eggshells. Um, and, and like I said, I've... I have shied away from disciplining a female where I should have done that um, just because I knew her attitude and I knew that she was very likely to go to HR and say that I sexually harassed her or something. Yeah, so uh, that, that I understand completely where you're coming from. And uh, my uh, policy over the years when I've been forced to work in an environment with women is forget dating. Don't talk to them. Absolutely. Hello and goodbye, and I need a number two lead pencil, and that's about it. Uh, I, one time I was forced to go on the road with a chick I absolutely couldn't stand uh, to do a broadcast. This was many years ago. And um, it, we were um, we were at an event, like we were covering an event. We were doing a show live from an event. Let's just say that. And uh, she came along, and uh, when we got there... My producer and I uh, were spending a lot of time socializing and bar hopping and stuff. So my producer and I discussed it. We agreed we're just not going to talk to her because we didn't want to be accused of anything. Yeah. And sure enough, she called the boss and whined. He won't talk to me. I'm here. I'm all the way here. 3,000 miles away. And he won't talk to me. And the boss calls me up on the phone and says, why won't you talk to her? I said, I talk to her. I say, can I have my headphones, please? And where do I plug this in? I'm, I'm very professional. Well, I am not required to spend my free time with her. I'm not required to figure out who's going to pay for dinner. I'm not required to sit there and drink and run the risk that I might say something I'll regret. Forget it. The women have asked for this. So that, that, that's how I look at this stuff. This chick knows who she is. She's listening right now. Of course, her husband is a radio personality, and he might be on at this time of day, so I don't know if she would be listening. But in case she is listening, she knows who she is. Of course, if you've heard his show, she probably is listening to us. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. George on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Great show, great topic. I'm not happy that this lady got $11 million for um, getting her feelings hurt, but I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for the defendants in this either. I mean, they hired Isaiah Thomas for a job he's totally unqualified for. He's not qualified to be the towel boy of the Knicks, never mind the president. 
they, as far as I'm concerned, they deserved it both for making a bad hire and for letting Isaiah Thomas alone with this lady. What do you think? Well, uh, again, uh, the laws are set up so women can file these lawsuits, and it's he said, she said, and the jury decides, and uh, I think in nine times out of uh, ten cases, uh, the woman is going to get some cash all out of it. Don't you think uh, the Nick- solution is don't hire women. Don't you think the next Knicks knew, knew that or should have known that before they, you know, put her in this position where she's apparently... Well, I, I, that's what I'm saying. I, if I were Madison Square Garden, I would have said, we'll interview everybody, but uh, if we have all candidates, or if the top candidates are equal, we're going to put a male in that position. And that's it. I can't really argue with that because she probably wasn't the best candidate for this job. Well, I don't know if she was or she wasn't, but uh, I, I do know that when you have a woman in a position like that, you're asking for trouble. And when you've got a team president like Isaiah Thomas like that, you're asking for trouble. Well, we, you know, what do we know about Isaiah Thomas as a person? Nothing. Oh, uh, we, we know a little bit. I mean, well, I remember... we, know, we know his best friend is Magic Johnson. Well, we also know, I remember an incident back when he was a player, and he was on the Pistons with a, a fellow named Dennis Rodman. I think you remember who he was? Well, I, that would be guilt by association. You can't you can't lay the fact that he played on the same team with Dennis Rodman as, as in any way. There was more to it than that. Well, what is it? He, um, they lost the playoff series to the Celtics, and Dennis Rodman and... Uh, Isaiah both denigrated the abilities of an opposing player, Larry Bird, saying he was an overrated white guy. I remember that incident because I was a Celtics fan at the time, and I remember thinking, what a couple of jerks. They just lost the playoff series, and here they go going off on the other guy's abilities because his skin happens to be the wrong color for a basketball team. That gave me a glimpse into Isaiah Thomas's character as far as I'm concerned. It was a bad but it doesn't. It doesn't tell us. But it also doesn't tell. And by the way, hiring Isaiah Thomas or not, that's not the issue. That's who they hired. But um, you know, once you've hired a former player of any race, any color, whatever, once you hire a former player to be the president of the team, I think you want to have all males surrounding him. I don't think you want to put chicks in that position. Now, clearly, you you couldn't legally say, "Well, we're only going to hire a guy for the job," but I think you have to find some subtle way of just hiring a guy for the job, and that's it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here comes Alice on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Let me get this straight. So you're the guy that says, don't hire women. And you're also the guy that says, don't support the baby mamas. And you're also the guy that says, men don't, you know, give money to women. Women should earn their own way financially. I just am curious what you would have a woman do. Well, again, uh, I personally would not hire if I were in a position, and I'm not. If I were in a position, I would find some way to not hire a woman for a gig like that. So I know it's none of your concern, but what do you propose if every man, you know, espouse your theory? Well, every man doesn't Every man doesn't espouse any theory. I mean, every man doesn't agree with anything. I mean, come on. Well, my point is that you're very inconsistent. You have your views have no alternatives for women. And and you know, they're they're uh, divergent in that, on one hand, you don't think women should be supported by men. You think men should cut and run. They certainly shouldn't be family guys, and God help them if they want children. And then on the other hand, don't hire women. We don't yeah. want them in the workforce, because what are we going to do with them? Again, you know? I'm not, uh, I, clearly, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Everybody is not going to do what I say. Everybody is not going to do what I say. I understand that. So it doesn't matter what I think. Do you understand? It does not matter what I think. I'm just one man's opinion here. But I'll tell you what, if I were in that position, that's what I would do. I would say I'm going to surround Isaiah Thomas with guys. <laughs> and then we don't have any sexual harassment suits. So so it's just about Isaiah Thomas. You're not generally in favor of Well, I know. I, per, but, I Put it this way. It depends on what kind of workplace you have. Now, if you have a library or a school, that's another story. But if you have, a, like, like where we work, the kind of show we do, we would be asking for it to have a woman in here. <laughs> I see. So but we would so, be fools to put a woman in here. What? I just, I just want to know in Tom Likas' world, what is the role of a woman? Just to, to screw him and leave, or what is the role of a woman in your world? The role because of a I woman is from her out. is from her left arm to her right arm. 
<laughs> I see. And then she could roll from her right arm to her left arm. I get it. That's the role of a woman. Oh, you're so clever. Well, now, now for it. some of these broads who call in here, the role of a woman is, is, is made of fat and it has some sweat pouring down. That's the role of a woman. <laughs> you know, you realize you have a lot of power and you have a lot of empty-headed people that listen to you, as your advertisers will. But you don't know. denigrate yourself okay. that way. I, I, I must say you sound a lot more intelligent than that. Well, you know, there are those exceptions, just like you said, but for the most part... <laughs> You have got guys listening. By the way, here you are. You called up. You called up to bitch me out, and you're laughing, which is the whole point of this. No, I know you're very entertaining, and you know I watch you quite frequently go for the easy, you know, the easy upset of anybody listening that's got half a brain, and and I understand it and appreciate it, and do listen. I do think it's entertaining. There we go. But I need you sometimes to point out that maybe your views are a little inconsistent. I don't think my views are inconsistent. I think my views are consistent. The fact is people are never going to do everything I say. <laughs> Thank God for small favors. <laughs> but those who do, I think, will be sued less. They'll make more money. They will keep what they own. They will not be giving their money away to people. And who's raising the kids in your world? What? I don't have kids. I know, but in the Tom Likas world, what's the role of children and women? I haven't figured it out. And don't be facetious. I'm not talking about that. No, I will. The role of children with women. Well, put it this way. I do believe that if people, put it this way, people want to have children, should get married for the sake of the children. And then on top of that, there should be a prenuptial agreement that states point blank what everybody's role is and how much the woman will get paid if things don't work out. And then the woman can either accept or reject that deal before they get married. Because okay, marriage is a business. Work. It is a negotiation. That is all it is. And so it's time that we admit it has nothing to do with romance or love or anything like that. It's a business venture. Well, that is true. And the older you get, as you and I know the more that's true. But when you're young and your hormones are flowing, let me tell you, you cannot be that subject or objective. And Well, you and could say, be. That's why I talk to these guys. By the way, many of these guys, they're getting the vasectomies. Uh, they are telling women they can't move in with them. They're saying, I don't want to get married. A lot of them are following what I'm telling them to do. I know. That's what scares me. And they're all going to be very lonely, old people. Well, what, do you think and I... My dear, do you th let me ask you a question. Do you think I'm lonely? I think you would be. I think if your voice goes and you're not on the air anymore, I think your life will be a sad life. Darling, yeah. I, I, I'm a multi-millionaire. I'm a self-made oh, right. multi-millionaire. Keep you warm, honey. Your Darling, when you have, when you are a multi-millionaire, there is no shortage of women who want to be your friend. But not your companion or your soulmate or your. Darling, I don't, I don't believe in any of that anyway. I believe women come along for the ride in order to get a piece of the action. I've got friends who are true friends. Uh, they're all guys. You see? No, I understand that. that good but women, talk, women are not your you. friend. They're not your friend. If you're a guy, women are not your friend. Okay? Uh, women uh, have a sense of entitlement, especially women born in the United States. And, and women, whether it's filing sexual harassment lawsuits or demanding more vagina money, uh, it's all about women thinking they're entitled to things. I, I was seeing a, a phrase in an ad. This was in an ad in England, and I thought it was really funny. It's a typical diamond store ad like you would see here in a newspaper. Um, and, and it said, it was a quote, uh, supposedly, from a woman. All it said was, I deserve a diamond. I deserve a diamond, and I'm sure that's a very effective ad, but guess what? Nobody deserves a diamond. You know who deserves a diamond? Somebody who goes to work, saves I money, agree, and buys a diamond. That's away. who deserves one, and nobody else. But in your world, women don't get hired, and, you know, in your world, you keep saying what a multimillionaire well, but, you are. What do you think you're going to attract? What do you think that attracts? But that's my whole point. I'm not looking. I, I, I attract women who think they're going to change. You have to understand here, I've, I've committed the perfect crime. Because women, women here, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something personal about myself. When I meet women and, and they know who I am and what I do, each one of them believes that this couldn't possibly be the real me. And even if it is the real me, they're going to change me because that's what women want to do with guys is change us. And, and so I let them, I let them, I let them believe that. I let them believe they're going to change me. And so I have sex with them, and they, of course, are on their best behavior, putting the best foot forward. 
Um, and they're putting one foot ahead of another or in the treadmill at the gym and all that stuff that they're not going to do later on if, if, I, if I get with them. So uh, after a while, after they've had sex with me a while, they, they want to know where this relationship is going. And I say, what do you mean, where is this relationship going? Aren't you having a good time? I'm having a good time. Aren't you having a good time? Why does it have to go anywhere? I like where it is right now. And then they get all upset, like, you know, you you used me. No, I never made any promises. You assumed things you had no right to assume. And then I move on to the next. There's always a fresher, newer, younger model around the corner. And to me, that when you're 80 years old, let's try to track you down if you're not still on the air, which I highly doubt. Darling, you, uh, you, know, you know, you know, you know, uh, Anna Nicole Smith's husband, who was 87 or whatever, he had, he had a wife. And she was waiting for him to slip on a banana peel. Uh, I do not believe <laughs> that 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 the vast majority of women are there because they love you. They are there because they're going to get their piece of the action. Well, it's, that's sad. I think that's sad, and I feel bad for you. But well, I know you're happy, and you're a millionaire, and you've got the world by the ass, so good for you. I have. I've got the world by the ass for sure. In fact, uh, I, I measure the world by the ass for God's sake. Tom Likes. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 Man, you know, you need to exterminate this broad on the line, man, because all I'm hearing is. Me, 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 me. Oh, we're on our phone, man. She's the kind of chick that you talk about all the time, man. It's the Tom Likes Show. Hollywood. It's the Tom Likes Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. And we are here talking about the first part of the Isaiah Thomas ruling. Isaiah Thomas, the president and the coach of the New York Knickerbockers NBA team. A jury decided that uh, Madison Square Garden, which is the company that owns the New York Knickerbockers and the building called Madison Square Garden, must pay $11.6 million in damages to a former marketing executive for the New York Knicks named Anucha, Anucha, Anuka, it was Anuka, it's pronounced Anuka, Brown Sanders, over her harassment lawsuit. And um, the verdict uh, found that uh, Knicks coach Isaiah Thomas had sexually harassed Anuka, subjected her to unwarranted advances and a barrage of verbal insults. And I say, if you don't hire chicks, you don't have this problem. God's sake. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Jesse on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? No. Um, hi, Tom. I was listening to your show. And, you know, congratulations or whatever. But On what? On your show. I'm congratulating you on your show. You're so rude. Um, Thank you. Uh, apparently, apparently you're congratulating me for having a rude show. I think that's great. Mm, well, um, I was just calling to say that, I mean, I listen to your show. I mean, it's a great show. I mean, I don't complain about it. But how come you never have anything good to say about women? I'll I have plenty of good things to say about women. Are you kidding? I knew one woman who could suck the chrome off a trailer hitch. That is a talent. <laughs> Uh, anything good, like anything. That's not nice good. I'll tell you what, I've got a trailer hitch that needs some sucking. You see, see what I mean? I mean, I listen to your show to see if one day you would say anything positive, anything good about a woman, but you don't. You never do. I just you, did. You, that's not a, that's nothing good. I, you know? I know, I know at least, I, I know I, I, some women who have amazing breasts, they're incredible. I just like sticking my face in there and going, blah, 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 blah. Uh, that's a good thing. A, uh, you're a pig. You're, I mean, Why? Because I like a woman's breast? Guess what? Uh, everybody with a penis likes that, except for a few gay guys, okay? Most of us like that. I know. I know, Tom, but is that why uh, that's all you think about women? It's just some uh, sex toy or anything? Oh, no, I have sperm depositories, actually. See, I mean, you never say anything good. You think you're that you're I think that's a great again. thing. Just like I think a urinal is a great thing. When I need to take a whiz at the top of the hour... I'm going down the hall to a urinal, and when I'm done, I'm going to be thrilled that it was there. What if it wasn't? I have to hop on one leg until the show's over. If you don't, I mean, you need to say... I'm I mean, not going to fall in love with that urinal. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to walk into the urinal in the men's room and say, I'd like to give you half of everything I've ever earned. I'm not going to do that. 
giving them. I mean, women make their own money, not just you. They guys. don't make as much you know, as I we do. Know how to support ourselves too, you know. You know. We, then, uh, then we if know that's true, we, if that's true, why do so many women demand vagina money? Oh my God, that's not all of the women. I didn't say all. Why do so many demand vagina okay. money? Okay, why? Right. Check this out. Okay. You say all the women. What about the men? I didn't say all the women. I said so many. You keep saying all, and I keep saying so many. I'm sure there are a couple of fat and fuglies or a couple of people with low self-esteem who have not demanded vagina money uh, or people who can't afford a good attorney who haven't demanded vagina money. I never said all women demand vagina money. I said, why do so many women, which does not mean all women, why do so many women demand vagina money? And the reason is simple, because of a sense of entitlement. I mean, I will never, let me talk. What about that? Uh, you, you know, Britney Spears is successful. I mean, she's the one that's going to uh, give cash to Kevin Federline. He's a man. You know, yeah, but, that, but again, there are exceptions to every rule. Uh, there was a story a couple of months ago about the guy. He fell out a 16-story window, and he lived. Now, does that mean that everybody should jump out a 16-story window? Absolutely not, because most of them are going to be dead. So the fact that 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 Britney Spears had to pay money to Kevin Federline doesn't prove anything. Watch your mouth. We are on the air. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I'm sorry. I apologize. But I'm I'm sorry. You're not making your point by using vulgarity. Huh? You're not making your point by using vulgarity. I'm, I know. I'm sorry. I apologize. But besides that, I mean, I'm pretty sure we're we're good at something else too. You know, something you could. By the way, are you good at that? Why don't, huh? why, are you good at that? Why don't you get right down here? Oh, thanks. You you said it yourself. You're See, right. I just said something good about a woman again. If, you, if you're good at that, you want to come down here and prove it. No, thanks, Tom. I heard uh, what you look like, so no thank you. No matter. I've got money, dear. That doesn't matter. You're always splashing your money, but money's got nothing to do with it, boy. You're really? so wrong in that. You oh, yeah. Well, you say that. Money, you say that. Wrong. You say that. But uh, chances are you're a, you're a fugly yourself. Oh, trust me, I'm not. Believe me, sure. I'm, I'm uh, not. Everybody looks great on the phone. Everybody's a 10 on the phone. Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm not lying. I'm calling because, sure. you know, because I, I'm, I'm, especially me, I'm a successful woman. I have a really good job. I'm 25. Mm. I have a really good job. Mm. I don't need a man to support mm. me and my daughter. That's what the fuck they Oh, and your daughter. Sure. That's why yes. you have to have a exactly. job. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I have my own daughter, and I don't need a stupid man yeah, to support and, me. And why'd you go out and do that? Why did I go out and do a baby? Yeah. Because at the time, he said that he loved me. Oh. He said that he was going to support me. Oh. And he said that he was going to give me this and that. You know, same, same story. And you that believe that. Why didn't you say, well, fine, marry me, and then we'll talk about having children? You know, that's uh, we were. We were engaged and no, everything. No. But no. Why weren't you married when you had children? Why? You know, well, had you, you waited until happened. had you no accident, there, there were no accidents with birth control. You weren't using birth control because you wanted to have a baby. And what's wrong with trying to have? See, a baby? so you now, now you baby. just admitted you just lied. Accidents happened. They may happen, but it didn't happen to you. That was not an accident. That was intentional. Yeah, well, I love my daughter, and to me, I mean, there's no regrets there. You know, the guy who who did this to me, for all he I didn't know do it to him, you. You you allowed it to happen. Yeah, of course I let it. Because you were another stupid broad. You were another stupid broad who doesn't see that marriage is a business deal. See, see, Tom, see, see what I mean? You say that I'm rude and vulgar. What are you? You know, you're talking. You're calling that's me that's legal, dear. I'm not doing anything illegal. I'm not doing anything the government considers vulgar at all. Yeah, but that's you know. Okay, a couple of chicks I'm doing that, might be considered how, vulgar, how but other than that, I huh? did it again. Jesus Christ. You and your filthy mouth. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. You got that? Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.